Let's talk about the p orbitals in terms of a chem quiz. Remember, an orbital is a group of three quantum numbers that define a wave function. So we need a value of n, a value of l, and a value of m sub l. If the value of n is 2, the value of l is 1, and the value of m sub l is 0, that's a p orbital. So for p orbitals, I've written a plot of psi and psi squared versus phi, that angle from the positive x-axis. And I want to know, I've plotted psi and psi squared versus phi. Which orbital am I talking about? The 2py, the 2pz, or the 2px? Think about that for a second and make a selection. Let's consider arguments for each of the possible answers. A, the y-axis is at phi equals pi over 2, or 90 degrees, and 3 pi over 2, 270 degrees, where y, uh, phi is a maximum. B, pz is perpendicular to psi, just as the vertical axis in the figure. Or C, phi is measured from the x-axis, so px and phi should align. Think of those three possible explanations and make another selection. We're talking about the 2p orbitals, and we're plotting the wave function psi versus the angle phi from the positive x-axis. Now there's three possible 2p orbitals. Remember, the 2px, the 2py, and the 2pz come from the three values of m sub l. m sub l equal minus 1, m sub l equals 0, m sub l equal plus 1. Now, we recombine them into this x, y, and z designation, but the crucial thing is that for l equal 1, there's three values of m sub l. So let's look at those three values. I've chosen to plot the 2py orbital here. And I know it's the 2py because the maximum occurs along the y-axis. So let's look at the wave function, which the square is kind of shown here. Uh, the wave function has positive values here, negative values here, but the two lobes have maximum values along the y-axis. So the wave function psi versus the angle phi, if you look at the angle phi equals 0, that is the x-axis. The angle phi gets bigger as you go away from the positive x-axis. So this angle phi equals 0 is the x-axis. If you look at the 2py orbital, the x-axis has an angular node right along the xz plane. So anywhere along the x-axis or the z-axis, the wave function has to be 0. And that's what we have in this case. The wave function is 0 for values of phi that are equal to 0. If I let phi get bigger, what I'll find is, well, I'll start to sweep into these positive values of the wave function. The wave function should go positive. The square of the wave function, of course, is always positive. If I let phi get larger, say, let phi sweep all the way around along to pi over 2 or 90 degrees, that gives you a maximum in the wave function value. That's as big as it's going to get along the positive y-axis. So that should be a maximum in the wave function and the square of the wave function. And I can continue around. I can let phi go to pi. I'll come along to the negative x-axis. And of course, anywhere along the x-axis, the wave function has to go to 0. And of course, the square of the wave function goes to 0. So these values of the wave function psi as a function of the parameter phi, the angle from the positive x-axis, describe a 2py orbital.